First of all, may I respond? You know, I believe in reducing insulin, but at the same time, you got to eat right. Because he may not know, and I know many people that's on insulin, and unless you have an eating right, insulin is doing you no good. Herschel Walker, Republican candidate for Senate out of the uh, state of Georgia, is of course spitting in the face of anyone who might need insulin to survive. He's not in favor of implementing price caps on insulin, which by the way, as we know, prices for insulin has gone up so dramatically that people who desperately needed to survive are either rationing it or foregoing the medication that they need. And so that clip is actually from Friday's debate between Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock, who of course are the two nominees for Georgia's Senate seat. Now Herschel's claim is obviously bogus, but just for good measure, let's tell you why. Medical experts say that maintaining a healthy diet can reduce a person's risk for type 2 diabetes, but eating healthy wouldn't help people with type 1 diabetes who can't produce insulin at all and who are struggling to buy it. I should also note that in a country where many people have needed, you know, organ transplants, kidney transplants for instance, they are forced to take steroids to prevent their body from rejecting the transplant that they have received. And taking those steroids sometimes leads to the development of diabetes through no fault of their own. So obviously Herschel Walker is completely ignorant on this matter and incredibly cruel to essentially tell people who are struggling to afford medication that they desperately need that eh, maybe it's your fault. Maybe you need to take personal responsibility and eat better. And by the way, it is rich to hear about personal responsibility from a man who has several children that he didn't want to acknowledge or take care of. It's just just fascinating commentary from this guy. Now yeah. telling someone with type one diabetes who isn't able to afford insulin to eat better could be a bit like telling someone who's drowning to wear a better swimsuit. Uh, I think that's a really good comparison. Cenk, go ahead. Yeah, so look, it's not news that uh, Herschel Walker is deeply ignorant. It's um, <laughs> probably why the Republican voters picked him. Like, oh, he doesn't know anything. That guy's perfect, right? Um, and nice Hulk Hogan movie. Hey, kids, better eat your vegetables. That has, no, wait, hold on. I mean, again, it's so insulting for people who need insulin to survive to say, no, you should pay more. You should pay more because it's basically your fault for not eating your vegetables. No, that's crazy. But why is he saying that? Because he doesn't know anything, right? It's because the Republican platform is, no, we should not negotiate drug prices. We should let drug companies who are our campaign donors charge whatever they want to the government and to the taxpayers and allow them to rob the taxpayers blind. That's Herschel Walker's position. That's the entire Republican Party's position. If you vote for a Republican, yeah. you should have your head examined. Yeah, it is the entire Republican Party's position. And I think it's really important to make sure that these are the topics that are front and center, not only during these debates, but through the entirety of Democratic campaigning. What I've noticed among most Democratic candidates, whether they're incumbents running for re-election or you know, a new slate of Democratic candidates who are challenging either an incumbent or a Republican. I just feel like they allow the right wing to frame what the topics are, what the topics should be, and they're inevitably culture war issues. And so when Democrats allow them to frame it, and then they go along with the framing, the only thing Democrats have in their arsenal is scolding, right? You're racist, you're bigoted, you're sexist, which by the way, all of those statements are true. But why are we allowing them to frame or to decide what the relevant issues are? They don't want to talk about their incredibly unpopular economic policies, their enabling of corporate greed, in this case, pharmaceutical companies. I mean, if I were running for office, I'd be like, yeah, cool story about the furries using litter boxes in school bathrooms. You're crazy and that's not happening. But let me tell you about the Republican Party voting against capping prices for insulin and how my opponent 
is totally on board with what Republicans are doing to enrich these pharmaceutical companies. And I would just repeat it over and over again. But we don't get that from Democrats. And it's incredibly frustrating because right now, you see them losing more and more support among independent voters as we quickly approach the midterm elections. And those independent voters say their number one priority is the economy. They genuinely think that Republicans would do a better job with the economy, even though we know the opposite is true. But we know that because we work in political media. Yeah. The vast majority of Americans don't have the resources to sit around and read about policy. So if you don't have Democrats pushing back against that messaging, then they're screwed. And guess what? They are screwed. They are. Yeah, so there's a candidate in New Hampshire, Boldick, uh, he that Tulsi Gabbard is endorsing campaigning for. Uh, that says we should not negotiate drug prices. Now that's their platform anyway, but he's actively saying it. But wait a minute, so that's, aloha. that's anti-capitalist. That's corporatism where you say, I don't want free markets. I don't want capitalism. I just want a monopoly and I want to be able to charge you whatever you want. And there's Republican candidates all around the country go, oh yeah, I love that, yeah. But the problem is the Democrats never make any issue out of it. Because they have a lot of drug company and health insurance company donors. So the Democrats, don't want to embarrass the Republicans because then they would get embarrassed. For God's sake, fight them, fight them and tell them, can you believe the Republicans are actively saying that we should have higher drug prices because of their goddamn donors? You'd win the election overnight, you'd win it super easy, but the Democrats are too corrupt to say. Yeah, and I mean, look at the polling. Let's go to graphic three here. Um, so. They showed a graph. The graph showed that results of a recent poll in which voters in Georgia were asked to name their top concern. This is not surprising. Like, if you work in politics or political media, this is the least surprising poll result ever. The most common answer given by about 40% of them was the economy. Okay, bread and butter issues, bread and butter issues. It's not that difficult. The second most common answer given by 18.6% was threats to democracy. Access to abortion came in a distant third, which honestly is pretty depressing. But again, I mean, when you're struggling, when you're concerned that you might not be able to pay your rent or your mortgage or provide food for your children, you don't have enough money to pump gas to get to work, the economy comes in at number one. It's the number one priority. I want to pivot to one other part of the debate that was pretty crazy. So, Herschel Walker. Uh, is arguing against any type of universal health care, government health care specifically. And I thought it, what the argument he made here was um, so incredibly ignorant and out of touch. And again, if I were Raphael Warnock, I would be hammering the point that people like Herschel Walker, along with the Republican Party, do not care about your economic well being or your health at all. Let's watch. People have coverage for health care. It's according to what type of coverage do you want? Because if you have an able-bodied job, you're going to have health care. But everyone else have health care is the type of health care you're going to get. And I think that is the problem. And what Senator Warnock want you to do is depend on the government. What I want you to do is get off the government health care and get on the health care he's got to get you a better health care. So that's what I'm trying to do to make you independent rather than dependent. As a United States Senator, Raphael Warnock gets government health care. I should I should put that out, put that out there. Also, we already have the system that Herschel Walker is talking about in place, where we are reliant on our jobs to get health care coverage. And if we don't get health care coverage through our jobs, we have to buy private insurance, which is unaffordable and doesn't provide the coverage necessary to you know, cover all the ailments that people tend to have. Doesn't even include dental and optical, like vision insurance. Like you have to get all of that separately, it's insane. That system is already in place and it has failed the American people. But Herschel Walker doesn't know, he doesn't care because he lives in a completely different world from the rest of us. Yeah, look honestly, Reverend Warnock is super soft. Uh, yes. I, I, I would have come back to, to that. Answer with, hey, dumbass, I have government health care. So you just told everybody 
that you want everybody to have the health care I have, which is government health care. So thank you for agreeing with me. So I assume you're gonna support at a minimum a public option, if not Medicare for all, right? Right, right? No, of course not. So hey, if we have just private insurance, we're gonna have 20 to 30 million Americans that don't have any insurance at all. And if they get sick, they might die. Are you okay with that? Now, Herschel Walker can't answer that question. He can't bear, he can barely answer what the question, what's your name, right? So, but Warnock just, okay, I mean, maybe it's easy, you just let him say things and, and he says things that are so dumb that it's newsworthy. Uh, but you should try to fight back. But this is a common thing with Republicans. I wanna go to graphic four, it's a picture from the Tea Party days. Uh, they did these rallies uh, against Obamacare uh, and that was my favorite sign. Government, keep your hands off my Medicare. I love it. Medicare it's is a so government good. program. Um, it's so good, delicious. What, yeah, what are you going to do with what are you going to do with Republicans? They don't understand anything, so I don't know how to communicate to them. So forget the Republicans. Go after the independents, win them over, uh, and uh, you can. By the way, Anna, to your point about the economy, they can say high gas prices. The oil companies are making record profits, so I'm going to go take some of their profits. They don't have to charge you more. They'd have to charge you more if they weren't making money. But if they're making record profits, why do they have to charge you more? They don't. So I'm gonna do a windfall profits tax on them and let the Republicans scream, no, my beloved oil companies need to get gas, keep gas prices higher. But Democrats don't do that because they both suck and they have the same goddamn donors. I can't yep. stand these establishment Democrats. They're gonna lose the House and the Senate. I'm in that camp of top priority being holding democracy. Unfortunately, none of the Democratic politicians are in that camp. They care more about protecting their donors than they do about protecting democracy. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.